Good day and welcome to the channel. In this short video, we are going to provide a review of and a disassembly of the Dell Latitude 14 Plus 7440. This is effectively Dell's mid-grade laptop. But when I say mid-grade, this has some pretty high-end specs. This particular model has 32 gig of RAM and it's rocking the Core Ultra i9-185H. So it's the first generation of Intel CPUs with an NPU, the Neural Processor Unit. Intel today, as of September 2025, has just released, and you can't buy them yet, but they're technically out there, the third generation. So this is a little bit older. However, this particular unit uh, came from a friend of mine who purchased it as a refurb from Dell. And he paid about $900 Canadian for it. So let's say $680 US for a laptop with 32 gig of RAM and an Intel Core Ultra 9 185H. The H is the upper end spec. It's not a U, the ultra mobile spec. It's the high performance mobile CPU. Now, when these first came out, they had a couple of problems with heat, but through a series of BIOS updates, that seems to have been resolved. So look, let's go over a couple of things in general about this unit before we actually pull this one apart and give you a little bit more of a background to help you decide what you're going to buy. So you probably have heard Dell's got rid of the Inspiron name. They've got rid of XPS, so on and so forth. So now there's Dell, Dell Pro, and Dell Pro Max. And in each of those three levels, there are three sub-levels. There's the base Dell, there's a plus, and there's a premium. Dell's are what would be Inspiron's mostly, and Dell Pro Max would be the XPS, the high-end machines that they used to have. And remember, this is a plus. So what does the plus get you? The plus gets you typically an aluminum chassis, not a plastic chassis. Does it make a difference? Uh, not if it's sitting on your desk, but if you're actually transporting it around, yeah, it makes a pretty big difference. Plastic scratches and doesn't have that nice feel. And this unit in particular has this great Dell finish that doesn't leave any fingerprints. Look, there's just nothing there. Really nice. It also has the higher end CPUs. And this one does have the Core Ultra CPUs. You could buy it with a lesser CPU, but it probably wouldn't be a plus. It would be just the plain base model. They also have better cooling. So there's the two cooling ports at the back right here, but there's also this one at the side. And does it make a difference? Yeah, it really does when you talk about these high-end CPUs. They also have higher resolution screens. So this particular one is 2280. So it's not a 1080p screen. It's 2880 by 1800. If you want the whiz -bang name for that, that's a Quad HD Plus. So it's not a 4K screen, but it's really high. And the other two big things you get with a Plus unit like this is typically more RAM. So instead of getting 8 gig or 12 gig, you'll get 16 or 32 gig. This one has 32 gig. And you'll also get a Thunderbolt port. Now, if you don't know what Thunderbolt is, it's a big deal. Basically, it's the future. So you can see this is the newer USB Type-C port here, right? And you think, okay, it's the same as all the other ports. No, it's not. What you can do with Thunderbolt ports that you can't do with regular USB-C ports? Video. You can actually push out to a monitor from this. USB-C will connect, uh, I believe the number is at 20 gig per second as its highest spec before it becomes Thunderbolt. And yes, it could connect at an even slower 10 gig, but most of them run at 20 gig. But if it's Thunderbolt, it can connect at up to 40 gigabit per second. So just to give you uh, an idea here, there's a USB type A port here, and it's technically USB 3.1, but it's only a gen one. That is a lowly five gigabit per second. Is that fine? Yeah, it's okay for things like keyboards and mice and printers and whatever else, but it's not fine for file transfers. Now you can do it and lots of people do, but if you can go to Thunderbolt at 40, yeah, that's eight times as fast. Plugging in USB drives and things that require large data transfers, that's the port. Okay, another a little feature, this has HDMI 1.4. 1.4 is bad. When I say bad, it'll work just fine for any regular monitor, 1080p, so on and so forth. But if you're trying to run like a 4K monitor off of that, yeah, it'll work at 30 frames per second. Not good. So if you have a 4K monitor, you're going to want to connect it through DisplayPort off that USB Type-C port. 
You can even run an 8K monitor off of that port. Another thing that this has that the lower spec doesn't have is an SD card reader right there. Now, what does the next step up have? The premium? The premiums will have things like touch screen options, even higher resolution screens. They'll be even thinner and lighter. One of the tremendously sort of silly criticisms of this unit is that it's relatively heavy. It comes in at about three and a half pounds. Oh my, a, a true ultralight these days is about three pounds. I don't think anybody's gonna care unless you're a teeny tiny person or you are crazy particular. Three and a half pounds, just fine. But if you get a Dell Premium, that will be probably three pounds and just the tiniest bit thinner. Another thing that the Premium will have that this one doesn't is an infrared camera. And you might ask, why would anybody want an infrared camera? So you can use biometric face recognition. You can just sit down at your computer and smile and bingo, you sign in. No passwords, no pins, no whatever. However, it does have a fingerprint reader right on the power button. So you still have biometrics. And about the last thing a premium will get you that this one doesn't have is a second Thunderbolt port. But you could just buy a Thunderbolt hub to connect more of these. You can daisy chain them. So if that was a real issue for you, you could make your own extra ports. Not very hard. Now this one also has a backlit keyboard. People say the backlit keyboard isn't very bright. Uh, perhaps, but I can tell you from somebody that's used it in both a dim and a dark room, works just fine. Another thing I've heard is in the slightly older versions, there's a lot of give in the keyboard. This one, very little. It's nice and firm. Key travel is really good and the, the key feel is really good. A couple of other specs that are noteworthy. The first is this actually has a 1080 camera, not a 720, which a lot of webcams in retail laptops will have a 720 camera because it's a little bit cheaper. It also has this TUV certification. And what that is is a blue light certification. So this screen will be easier on your eyes. Just before we pull this one apart, let's explain the numbering system because that's another thing that just confuses people. The first digit, the seven, indicates where it is in the tiering of the options that are available for this Inspiron 14 Plus. The seven is a high model. If you have a five, it'll be a lesser model. So if the first number is a five, like a 5440, could be a great product, might be very similar, but a little bit less. The second digit in this case is a four, 7440. So that four, it relates to the size of the screen. It's a 14 inch screen, actually 14.1 inch diagonal from here to here, not across the top, but diagonal. And the last two digits usually indicate the generation. So this is 40 at the end. It's probably a 2024 model. The four matches up with the year, mm, sort of. So that's where 7440 comes from. One thing people always want to know about this type of laptop is, because it's pretty high-end CPU, is can you play games on it? And previously the answer would be eh, sort of. Now the answer is yes. Let me explain why. NVIDIA has a process called DLSS. And AMD has a process called FSR, but this is an Intel CPU with an integrated video card, so it uses XESS, which is XE Super Sampling. And what that allows you to do is have the game itself render the game you're playing at a lower resolution, and then have this GPU scale it up to the full resolution of the screen. And you might think all that extra processing is really gonna slow it down. No, it's actually faster. It's really weird. You would think that native resolution would be the fastest way to go. No, you've got a 1080 screen, display at 1080, you're on your way. No, it's actually, you get better performance if you displayed it at say 720, a lesser resolution, and then use this XESS to scale it back up to the full 1080. It'll improve your frame rates, which makes the game smoother. So yeah, this thing's powerful enough to play modern games at a full 1080 resolution, and you can get between 30 and 60 frames per second. So look, nobody's gonna confuse us with a gaming system, but you could actually do it and get really good results out of it. All right, so let's show you how to do a disassembly on this so that you can do your own upgrades. You don't need to pay somebody if you need to upgrade something in the future. And let's see what you can upgrade. Now, I haven't pulled this one apart yet, but I suspect I've actually soldered the memory right on the board. And why would they do that rather than using the sockets? So you can swap them in and out? I think because the 32 gig is the max you can have on this system. So there's no need to ever upgrade it. But I'm not sure of that, let's find out. So flip it over and take the screws at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yes, you're going to need specialty tools. It's smaller than a little number one, Phillips. Phillips is the star. So 
So normally we tell people to lay the screws out in the way that they came out, but in this case, they're all the same. However, the two screws at the back, like most Dells, have a little washer on the back. So these two won't actually come out, they'll just get loose. Now there used to be a pry point, basically a little slot in here for you to put something to pry the back off. That doesn't exist anymore. So usually you'll see a corner will pop. Yep, this one has the corner just pop up, good. So if you don't have a proper pry tool, you can just use an old credit card. You've got a nice 64 kilowatt battery. Lesser models will have a 54 or even smaller battery. This is a four cell, one, two, three, four cells. Speakers are right here, but you're never going to change them. There is a 2280 M.2 SSD. Basically no moving parts in this except the CPU fan. Now, whenever you take the back off one of these things, blow that out. Now this is brand new, so I'm not gonna bother, but if you've had this for any more than a few weeks, blow it out. And if you don't have a can of compressed air, just Blow on it with your mouth, clear it out. That's your Wi-Fi. You can always tell Wi-Fi because it's got two cables coming off. They're the antennas. One goes behind the keyboard, one goes behind the monitor and they go up and take an L shape so that they are always have a connection to the signal no matter which way the device is turned. And the memory is under here. I don't want to pull this up very much because you can see this is going to fold and I don't want to screw this up. It's not slotted, which means you can't upgrade it, but it's at the 32 gigabyte maximum anyway, so who cares? People think this is where your CPU is, but it's not, your CPU is here. And this heat pipe transfers the heat from the CPU, which also includes the Intel Arc GPU for graphics, and it transfers the heat from here all the way over to here where the fan is. And you'll remember we said the heat dissipates out of the back but on these higher end models, they also have it dissipate out of the side. If you ever do need to change the battery, it's super easy. One, two, three, four, and sometimes five, but not here. And then there's your battery cable, which you just lift up and pull out. So that's that. So overall, what do we think of the Dell Inspiron 14 Plus 7440? Pretty impressed. This particular unit is replacing an Acer with a very similar spec that the company had purchased a while ago. Uh, and that unit was fine, but it just doesn't have this Dell build quality. This is just a lovely unit. And that aluminum chassis and Dell reliability really seems to show with this unit. We like it. We would definitely buy more of them and we would recommend them to others. So hey, if you found this video useful, big thumbs up would be super appreciated. Subscribe's also always appreciated. And if you have any questions or concerns, you can always get a hold of us directly at www.urtech, that's www.urtech.ca, or you can leave a question or comment below. And if we don't get back to you, somebody else will because on YouTube, yeah, everybody's got an opinion. Thanks and have a great one. Bye.